I need to refer back to something. Okay, uh, so yeah, I started the recording. Um, yeah, it's just the JSON of ourselves. We have uh, four people on the call. And uh, right now we are planning to process uh, agenda and the uh, leftovers from the previous meeting led by Mark. And uh, after that, uh, we will just switch uh, to another organizational part. Okay, so next question was, uh, should comments oh. for long running projects, right? Right, so Google Season of Docs has two concepts, a regular length and a long running mm -hmm. project. The question was, are there any any negatives for someone proposing a long running project? So a long running project is basically, firstly it implies a more relaxed schedule. So it means so that what's highlighted here, like uh, the schedules easily, yeah, that's for, uh, true. Harder to predict uh, is, uh, it really depends on how planning is organized, how team cooperates, because uh, there is no practical difference uh, in a short and intensive project and uh, long and uh, low intensive project. Uh, it really de depends on how the teams operate. Um, and for the next question, uh, for the next bullet about uh, could be more valuable? Yes, they could, uh, but yeah, why they could be more valuable? Uh, firstly, yeah, you may choose a long-running project uh, and work uh, much more on that than expected. So for long-running project, yeah, you can deliver more in this case. Uh, whether it's advised or not, well, basically it's your personal choice. And uh, it's definitely not expected that you take long running project and keep working 40 hours per week on that. Uh, at the same time, it may be more valuable because uh, there is more opportunities to get feedback. Uh, because uh, you can submit something for review, you can uh, submit something to the community. Sometimes review cycles are quite long, as you may have experienced from uh, your GSOT applications. Uh, sorry about that, but yeah, it, what may happen in open source because uh, yeah, the project is driven by volunteers, uh, all our mentors are volunteers in this case, and it means that sometimes responses might be delayed. For mentors, we don't expect it during the active phase, but if you are outreach to the wider community, again, uh, there might be delays. So long uh, running project basically allows to mitigate that and uh, it allows to do longer review cycles. If you want to do any kind of surveys, et cetera, it may be more convenient. If you talk about special risks, well, yep, mm, longer timeline, uh, longer, uh, there are more risks of various events, like um, well, whatever, uh, like, COVID-19 confinement version two and so, uh, so you need to keep it in mind. At the same time, uh, yeah, long running project that provides you more flexibility to react uh, to the things. So, yeah, I'm not uh, sure how flexible is Google in terms of uh, Google season of docs um, uh, uh, deadlines. For JSOC, uh, deadlines are fixed. I believe it's small as the same for JSOC, but if there is really emergency, etc., of course, uh, Google uh, is open to discuss options, especially in the case of JSOT uh, when uh, there is a lower number of uh, uh, mentors participating in the project. So um, there might be more opportunities. But... So I provided some hints, but generally a long running project is neither advice uh, to not discouraged, it's just another option. And it's uh, basically up uh, to you to decide what would you prefer in terms of availability. In the case of the Jenkins project, I believe you can accommodate both uh, short-term uh, projects and long-term projects. Um, so it really depends on you. Great. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So then um, could a project proposal specify the alternatives I want to do a regular or if allowed, I want to do long running as part of the project plan or should they, the, the, one of the questions was how should they frame it if they think they've got a long running project or something that might be both, it might be one or the other in well, their plan. part of uh, JSOT application, we expect uh, a plan and I believe that uh, they have to explicitly specify whether it's a long running project or not in the application. Um, I might be wrong about that. Uh, but 
if you have um, a preference, please mention it um, in your project schedule. Because for us, it uh, may also require some adjustments um, on the terms of mentorship side, etc. Because, for example, Christmas break and other things um, which uh, may uh, get into equation. And yeah, just having uh, information about uh, the plan um, in advance would be preferable. But again, uh, uh, longer term or shorter term project it doesn't make a difference in terms of evaluation because. Uh, the amount of time I expect to be spent on the project is approximately the same. Thank you. Now, how to deal with, how do we adapt to changing, changing things we learn during the project, etc.? cetera? Uh, yep. In uh, Google Season of Docs, the approach is exactly similar to Google's uh, Summer of Code. As long as your mentors are fine with the progress, uh, the organization is fine with the progress. So it means that uh, deviations may happen. In each cases, even uh, significant changes of the subject may happen. Though it's not something like, uh, you would uh, really want to do, but yeah, things may happen. For example, you apply uh, to work on, uh, uh, let's say, documentation migration. You provide a list of plugins. And we know that uh, basically there is continuous migration of uh, uh, plugins in the community. So it means uh, that uh, even you submit your proposal now, in August, let's say we are accepted, but uh, by the beginning in September, uh, there might be contributors who address, let's say, half of your scope. Uh, it may happen, um, and uh, we expect uh, the teams to adjust um, based on such scenarios. And it's not a problem. Uh, it happens everywhere. It happens in real uh, work. It happens uh, uh, in open source um, and everywhere. Change of plan is a part of the plan. Just uh, make sure that uh, you communicate with mentors and uh, do joint decisions uh, on that. Great. OK, so what are the limitations of changes? Uh, so. Yeah, minor uh, changes, which do not change deliverables, it's not a problem. If major deliverables change, then, yeah, of course, it's a subject for discussion with mentors. Great, excellent. Mm -hmm. And then the who do we inform, I had assumed that we only have to do formal notification to Google if someone were actually abandoning their project. If they if they had been accepted and then later said I have a personal emergency I simply cannot continue, um, but other than that changes don't have to be notified to Google. We just go ahead and accept the flexibility ourselves. Yes Is, and no. Uh, oh, okay. So yeah, just to clarify how we approach it in JSOC and how we approach it in uh, JSOC, I believe. But yeah, again, all minor changes they happen uh, on the project teams. Still, uh, we expect uh, uh, teams to notify org admins uh, in the case of significant changes. So let's say if you change the order of the delivery, et cetera, it's totally on the project. But if you change the scope significantly, it's better to notify org admins so that they know about that. And if you have uh, to change uh, error significantly, so for example, you want to create Kubernetes documentation, then let's say Google cancels Kubernetes and you agree to work on Docker documentation. Uh, so these changes likely need a uh, discussion and likely need the uh, heads up to Google. Uh, obviously I provided a case which is unlikely to happen, but uh, yeah, just to provide you an idea. So such a drastic uh, scale changes, again, uh, it's basically an organization decision. Uh, but uh, we still prefer to notify uh, Google team about that because, uh, again, if something goes wrong, if we have to fail the project, um, uh, this uh, communication transparency um, may help both sides. So, so one that I may have made a mistake on on Google Summer of Code, if we're adding a mentor or a mentor changes, that should go to the org admins always, right? Yes, because sort of means I need to do updates on the website, etc. Good. Uh, okay. Sorry, I didn't well, do that. Yeah. So yeah, it's a separate uh, things, mm -hmm. uh, but 
yeah, so it's uh, ORCAD means it's changes in the deliverables if needed. And uh, for example, if uh, there are long uh, uh, unavailability periods, so during Google season of dogs, uh, you're also expected to take vacations, uh, to take breaks, uh, but let's say if you are going uh, on a one week uh, vacation, it's better to send heads up to Orchid means because we may need to do some communications and it's better that you know in advance that you're not available. Excellent. That, oh, one last question. I think I got the answer right, but the question was, can a technical writer act as a mentor if they were not accepted as a writer? Mm -hmm. So let's say we have a, someone who submits a proposal, and one of many, and we select only a, a few of those, and the others say, hey, I still want to be involved. Can I, could I switch and become a mentor? Um, and my assumption was, if you know Jenkins and are willing to mentor, you could potentially be a mentor in this case. Right. Uh, so there is no limitation on that, as far as I can tell. Uh, yep. Also, uh, as we discussed at the previous uh, documentation seek meeting, uh, we consider doing additional uh, um, uh, community bridge projects in a, uh, for documentation in addition to Google Seasonal Docs. And in this case, uh, they definitely uh, there won't be uh, such limitation for sure. And it might be also an option uh, for you to apply to a community bridge instead of Great. And, uh, documentation. And we had discussed community bridge actually on in the Monday office hours. So that's mm -hmm. great. I just, we looked, took a tour of the site. I gave a brief overview. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. That covered all the questions that there were on the, the meeting from mm -hmm. last Monday. Thank you. Okay. So yeah, regarding uh, the rest, yeah, uh, July 9th uh, is a deadline for applications, or, or July 8th. Uh, but yeah, so we have uh, a bit less than one week. Uh, so I can be asked all mentors, etc., to focus on reviewing the proposals. I spent some time scrubbing there, and thanks to Mark for doing uh, reviews of almost every proposal by now. And we basically encourage uh, contributors to review proposals and also to do peer reviews uh, if you're interested in the project, etc. And then, yeah, I hope that uh, we will be able uh, to process uh, all this list. Again, if you don't receive feedback, please don't hesitate to ping uh, participants because yeah, sometimes we don't provide uh, the feedback because the proposal looks good. Um, so yeah, there would be some minor things to discuss, but uh, overall we have enough information to run this proposal. Sometimes we don't provide feedback because yeah, basically we are just overloaded with other stuff. So, so if you don't receive it, uh, yep. Continue, excuse my interrupting. Yeah, if you don't receive feedback, just uh, please ping us. Yeah, so as far as I can tell, I have reviewed all the proposals that I've detected. Mm -hmm. That means if someone was expecting my review and got no comments, I missed their proposal. And so, so I would, I at least personally would be very grateful if someone says, hey, Mark, you said you'd re you re reviewed everyone. Mm -hmm. You made no comments on mine. I made a comment on uh, some minor thing, at least on everyone that I reviewed. So, mm -hmm. so if if there's a proposal that I've missed reviewing, please ping me in the docs channel, send me email, the Gitter, yeah, in, on the docs mailing list, any one of those is great. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's perfectly fine with me. And if I don't provide feedback, just ping me. Uh, because yeah, that was out for a while, but I'm catching up with all my inbox. I just have 2,000. Uh, and 400 emails to process. Oh. Oh. That's a matter of life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I guess that's it for today, unless there are any other questions. So I will do this meeting uh, next week uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, lessons learned uh, that uh, this slot is not uh, suitable for tech writers. 
So if we organize meetings after the uh, acceptance of projects, it will be a different time slot. And right. Yeah, we well, and work, uh, how to organize it. Yeah, I was I was amazed that we had we had people in the Monday afternoon my time call mm -hmm. from West Africa. So so they were calling in at 10 p.m. their time, and it seemed to work better for them. So that yeah, that's okay. Yeah, if you employed professional uh, somewhere, then uh, yeah, probably this time is not ideal. Maybe for Asian Pacific region, but for Asian Pacific region at the same time, uh, yeah, there is not so many applicants for JSOT according to last year's statistics. But whatever. All right. Thanks, Oleg. Yeah, thank you, Tom. And yeah, I'll publish uh, the recording uh, tonight.